slide two. Okay, so here's the question. Uh, paraphrase, in spiritual conflict, does your scripture discuss how to win? Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm going to use the word Hinduism and Sanatan Dharma interchangeably because the true term is actually Sanatan Dharma, but it's easier to say Hinduism. In Hinduism, conflict is an illusion and it arises due to the duality. I and mine, you and yours. Duality in the world is measured by the yardstick of moral values, not spiritual values. Conflict exists in the moral world. It doesn't exist in the spiritual world according to Hinduism, because in the spirituality, there is only one. There are no two. It's a non-dual concept. The duality is a result of the misidentification of ourselves with our body, our mind, and our intellect. Just that was mentioned a few minutes ago, that when we think that I am this, that I am my mind, the Western concept that I think therefore I am is not supported by the science in spirituality of Vedic literature. I am my intellect was not supported because when you identify with something, that means you are that. However, if you see your body, if there is a subject object relationship between the two that I see my body, I experience my thought coming and going, but I don't come and go. I see my intelligence changing from a childhood to adulthood to the older person, but I'm not changing. I'm the witness to all three and therefore I'm not any of those. I'm something that sees all of that, experiences all of that, but I'm not that. So it's I and mine versus you and your, that separation that's created as a result of misidentification with a separate being, this body or this mind is the root cause. The term is used Maya, which is an illusion of suffering and conflict. So mind is always traveling either in the past or in the future. It is only capable of traveling on the road called time. And time is a construct of mind. So either we are constantly from the mental perspective, looking for things that we don't have, which means I'll use the word desire. Desire is the same as mind traveling in the future or attachment, which is the mind traveling in the past, wanting to keep something that's already gone. Both of them are impossibilities. You can't keep what's already passed and you can't have something that's not yet here. Both of them are impossible items. What you have and what you can have and where you are is present. So the mind that travels constantly in the past and in the future that you can't have generates conflict. And the conflict of this tug of war between desire and attachment, between past and the future is anxiety, frustration, depression, anger, blame game, and so on. Realizing that everything is one supreme reality, here and now is the only way to take yourself out of the conflict and out of suffering. Next slide, please. So I'm going to give you two quick examples to, to illustrate this point. <clears throat> so how do you end conflict that you suffer in your dream? So imagine you're sleeping and you have a dream. Dream is always made up of you as the subject of the dream, looking at the world that's made up in the dream. And if so you are in a conflict over there, you are in a relationship that's in conflict, you are in a fight that's in a conflict, you are not getting something, you're suffering, whatever it may be, the conflict that exists in your dream can never be solved unless you wake up. So the solution is not to try and win the conflict. You may win some, you may lose some. But the permanent solution 
to be free of the suffering and the free of the free of conflict is to wake up the example that you had seen last time with our esteemed speaker was a conflict between a crocodile and an elephant when the elephant surrenders himself to the lord then the conflict ends so this surrendering process is the process of waking up second quick example if you have a rubber band and you have a nail on which you hang a rubber band and then you stretch the rubber band further and further away trying to put it on another nail there will be a strain inside the rubber band and then you say how do i relax the rubber band how do i make the rubber band at peace as long as you're stretching it you can never have the rubber band at peace you are always looking for a nail to put the rubber band on you are looking for that object to acquire i want more money i want this i want prestige i want name it's always the different nails that you are trying to put your rubber band on and then you say why can't i find peace you are trying to go to the peace which is a completely error in your concept according to hinduism the art is to let go so if you have a tight fist and you say my fist is hurting what can i do to make it not hurt it's not what you can do stop doing what you are already doing to make it tight so it's the undoing that leads you to peace Thank you so much uh, dr naresh for your answer let's give a round of applause great so um for the first very clear answer within the scriptures of hinduism does it teach uh, how to be victorious in a spiritual conflict absolutely yes then in order to do so it's not the separation of i or you but to be able to acknowledge the uh, correct me if i'm wrong the one divine reality or the entity living in the now um and by being able to do by being able to acknowledge that reality excuse me for the background noise uh, if we're able to acknowledge that reality for the now then our mind will be at peace because by living in the now and living in this reality will no longer be drifting into the past or the future which is i think the past was regret was it regret or something else attachment 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 and desire for the future and that is how can we say our spirits our souls can be at peace our soul is already at peace according to hinduism it is the mind that is not at peace mind needs to merge into the soul to find peace that's the only way mm-hmm. so in the sense of just to be absolutely clear about that detail letting go uh, to be waking up is to I guess in, in that general sense it's finding to surrender peace. the mind to surrender to the spirit it's the sense of i the separateness to become one with god and that would be the present the reality that is now okay well thank you so much dr naresh for a very insightful answer okay so the question to in spiritual conflict is there a final conflict and what does the victory look like next slide please we'll continue from the last time that in according to hinduism there is no conflict in spirituality conflict exists in the duality the world of moral yardstick not the spiritual yardstick and if there is no conflict there is no victory because there is only one conflict requires dualism requires two and if spirituality in hinduism says entire universe is one then there is no room for conflict the final conflict if you want to use the duality since we live in the world of duality since we are born in the world of duality since we are born in the concept of i and mine and you and yours and we have to migrate from this point on forward it's still necessary for us to understand how to elevate ourselves spiritually from this plane of existence to a higher plane of existence so the final conflict is the death of the ego the merging of the mind into the spirit merging of the illusory i that identifies i to this body mind and intellect to true i 
the I that identifies itself with the consciousness. And my consciousness is not different from your consciousness. It's only one consciousness. There are different words used in different spirituality, different scriptures and different religions. Nirvana, being one with God, entering the kingdom of heaven, moksha, all of these things from Hindu perspective refers to the same thing. Amalgamating individual mind into the universal consciousness. And the result of this awakening is everlasting peace and joy. As soon as you wake up from the dream, going back to our prior example, as soon as you wake up from the dream, the happiness disappears and the sadness disappears that were present in the dream. Now you have a calmness and peace. The duality of the dream that you were experiencing, where you were happy or unhappy, both of them disappear when you wake up. Next slide, please. So using an example, we are going to demonstrate how the symbolism in storytelling works in Hinduism. There is a story of Lord Drama and uh, he represents the pure knowledge, knowledge of the self. His brother, Lakshmana, represents selfless action. His wife, Sita, represents pure love, devotion, and surrenderance. And Hanuman, the monkey god, represents our mind. But his name is Hanuman. The mind is depicted as monkey because just like monkey bounces from one branch to the other branch in the tree, the mind tends to bounce from one desire to the other desire, from one want to the other want, from one thought to the other thought, never being still at one point in time ever. However, Hanuman represents the one who has conquered his mind, one who has allowed the mind to merge at the feet of the Lord, one who has allowed the mind to merge with the divine. When that mind takes on a journey, only that mind is capable of finding true love true devotion, true surrenderance. And where has the love and the devotion and the surrenderance has been quote unquote kidnapped by a demon called Ravana. Ravana represents a demon with 10 heads. Where does this 10 headed demon come from? It's us. There is good and bad both reside within us. The 10 heads are depicted representing our body two eyes, two nostrils, mouth, two ears, two organs of elimination, and the tenth one is mind. These things through which we project our energy outward is what creates the conflict, the suffering, and, the, and, 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 and allows us to uh, continuously look for the peace from it. So it's like a mind which is a pure, the, the spirit which is a pure energy inside of us when it refracts the light through the prism of mind on the outside through the sense organs, it sees the world of plurality, anger, frustration, hatred, false love, and so on. But if that mind were to turn backwards, it'll be able to see the pure incident light from which it originated in the first place, which is the spirit itself. So the conflict can only end if the mind withdraws itself from the external sources and merges internally with a backward journey into the spirit. It's the same thing that Lao Tzu said, the journey of a self-realization is of a single step, the step inward. 